partnership. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to a Word from the Lord. Jim's over here with you. Glad to be back. Uh, been gone for a while, but uh, we're back in town and <clears throat> hope that you're ready for another study from God's Word. We are coming to you from Reedsville, North Carolina, and I hope you enjoyed Mark's program. I always catch the tail end of it, and usually there's calls hopping. We will turn our phone lines open uh, momentarily and uh, let you call in, but we first want to give you our content information. Uh, the Church of Christ in Eden, North Carolina meets at 250 the Boulevard. My phone number is 276-340-2653 or 336-394-5721 or word from the Lord at gmail.com. If you would like to uh, reach me <clears throat> by that way, all of our copies of our program are free. If you're in the Martinsville area or the Danville area, 823 Starling Avenue is where the Saints meet. Of course, Johnny Robertson is the host of uh, What Does the Bible Say on Sunday nights at 9 o'clock. Mark is the host of What Does the Bible Say on Thursday nights at 8 o'clock. And you can reach uh, uh, Mark at 434-770-8412. Johnny is 276-806-2150. The, the Saints in Martinsville meet at uh, 823 Starling Avenue and 120 American Legion in Danville. <clears throat> we hope that you will certainly go by and visit with them. I uh, also want to remind you that if you are online, you can watch What Does the Bible Say on Tuesday nights at 9 p.m. on uh, WHIGTV.com. It's broadcasting out of Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. Brother Johnny Robertson is down there uh, doing that program uh, once a week, and so we hope that you will uh, tune in to What Does the Bible Say on, uh, at, th at that time as well. We are simply trying to do all that we can to get the, the glorious gospel out to the lost uh, world and those who have been blinded by, by Satan from the truth. Uh, those of you, there, I know there are many people who don't really appreciate what does the Bible say or a word from the Lord or, or the programs that we do. They want us to uh, stop. They want us to get us off the air. We have people call in and say, you know, I'm going to do all I can to get you off the air and, and so forth. And you know, that's all fine, well, and good if you want to try, but I believe we're doing what the Bible says. We're doing what uh, God wants us to do, and doors of opportunity open up to us. Uh, we are trying to uh, uh, make inroads any way we can, whether it be on uh, the Internet uh, as we speak. I am uh, hoping that uh, we are making connection with a brother out in Oklahoma who is going to be broadcasting on the uh, on the, the a local radio station out there, uh, we're still trying to get the kinks worked out, so that may not happen tonight. But we are certainly hoping that it will happen in the future, and we are looking forward to uh, um, uh, broadcasting not only on TV and on the internet, but also on radio as well. And so uh, uh, we are just uh, excited about all the doors of opportunity, and we're thanking. The Lord for the doors that are opening to us, and we hope that we can go through them and do all that we can to spread the glorious gospel and bring honor and glory to his name. So uh, we'll keep you up to date on that. <clears throat> Friends, what would you say if a husband did not want to admit that he was married to a woman? Now what would you think about that person? You probably think, well, there's something wrong with him. He doesn't really love his wife. He doesn't really care about her if he wouldn't admit that he's married to her. And on the same hand, what if you had a woman who was ashamed of her husband? Now, you know, it seemed to me that uh, oftentimes we, we, we kind of frown upon that, but there actually was an occasion where there was a man who uh, didn't want to admit that someone was his wife and actually got his wife to admit that, that uh, she was not, or to say that she was not uh, uh, the man's wife. In Genesis chapter 20, Genesis chapter 20 and uh, verse uh, 1, we find that Abraham journeyed from thence toward the south country and dwelled between Kadesh and Shur and sojourned in Gerar. And Abraham said of Sarah, his wife, she is my sister, and Abimelech king of Gerar sent and took Sarah. Now, it was true that Abraham was and Sarah were, were half uh, brothers and sisters, and that, that was true in, in a sense, but he was doing it because he was afraid that uh, he would be killed. But my question to you is, 
what would what would you say if your husband said that about you? If didn't want to admit that he was your husband, or if your wife did not want to admit that she was in fact uh, your wife, what, what, or that you were her husband, what would you say about that? Well, I say that a lot of people do that very thing when it comes to Christ. Now think about this: if you are really married to Christ, and the Bible says that we are, what would you what would you do, or what would you say about that? It seems to me that when people are talking about the bride of Christ, when people are talking about the bride of Christ, they are um, they must be sort of ashamed of the bride of Christ because when people are, are saying, well, the church doesn't matter, they're really saying that they're ashamed or they're afraid of Christ. And so I submit to you that they are, in effect, sh- ashamed of Christ. Notice this. In 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 13, Paul said, we have in the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe, therefore, I have, have I spoken. We also believe, therefore, we speak. Now, friends, I want you to know that I am not ashamed of the bride of Christ. I'm not ashamed to be a member of the church of Christ. I'm not ashamed of, of, of Christ's church, and thus, that's why we talk about it. But if you want to say, or if you're one of these individuals who will not defend the church of Christ, if you're one of these individuals, and there are some who are, who are truly my brethren in, in, in Christ, who are ashamed to defend the church, who don't want to admit that, yes, there is one true church, there's one body of Christ, it is the church of Christ, and if you're not in that church of Christ, then you're lost. Paul said in Ephesians 5 verse 23 that Christ is the Savior of the body. And if you are ashamed to admit that, then you must be ashamed of Christ. Well, when people uh, say that, they're basically saying that they won't defend the bride of Christ. What Paul said there in 2 Corinthians 4.13, he said, but if we believe it, we'll say it. So if you don't really believe in the church of Christ, or if you don't believe in the bride of Christ, then you must be ashamed of it or you don't really believe it. Now, why is it Why is it that some people then won't defend the church that they're in? This, this evening, what I want you to consider is the fact that some individuals will say that they're members of the church of Christ. That is, they're saying they're part of the bride of Christ. They're saying they're married to Christ. They're saying that Christ is their husband in, in, the, in the spiritual sense, but yet they won't defend it. Now, I want you to ask you a question. Are they really ashamed of the bride? Consider this. Paul was not ashamed of the bride of Christ. As a matter of fact, Paul talks quite a bit about the bride of Christ. He talks about the church, which is the bride of Christ. Uh, In 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 2, notice this if you would. 2 Corinthians, here. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 2. I'm trying to get back in the... In the groove here, Paul said, I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. So he's talking about the church and and her relationship to Christ as husband and wife. As a matter of fact, he's going to say in Ephesians chapter 5, let's just go there, Ephesians chapter 5, and verse uh, uh, 23, he says, For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is head of the church, and he's the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. And he goes on and he says in, uh, at the end of this chapter, uh, about verse 32, I believe he said, this is, uh, this is a great mystery. He says, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. He's making the comparison between husbands and wives and the bride of Christ to the, uh, our Christ and to uh, uh, Christ's church or his bride, which, uh, uh, which is the, the church of Christ. Now, what we're talking about then is Paul is talking about all of these, uh, the relationships between husband and wife 
And he's saying, look, this is the relationship that Christ has. If you don't talk about the bride, you must be ashamed of her. If you don't talk about Christ uh, and the relationship that he has with his church, you must be ashamed of it. But Paul talked about it a lot. As a matter of fact, he said in 1 Thessalonians 2 verse 7, he was as gentle as a nurse toward Christians who make up the body of Christ. Or that he loved the church like a father. 1 Thessalonians 2 and verse 11. So these are simply showing the, the, uh, uh, the love and the compassion and the feelings that Paul had for the church, how much he was proud to be a member of the church of Christ, and how much, therefore, he was proud to be part of the bride that was married to Christ. But when we talk about the religious world, there are a lot of individuals who are in the denominational world that want to say, want to convince you that they are part of the body of Christ as a whole, that they are all part of the bride of Christ. As a matter of fact, this is what the, uh, the church looks like in the eyes of the denominations. They want to say that the Baptist and the Methodist and the Seventh-day Adventist and the United Pentecostal Church and the Episcopal Church and, the, and so forth, that they're all part of the body of Christ. Different groups that are within the same body. Different groups distinct because of their doctrines, different because of their organization, uh, uh, different from each other because of their of what they teach and what they practice, but yet they want to say they're all part of the body of Christ. They all fall under that great big umbrella that is called the church of Christ. Well, is it really the case that they are all part of the bride or the body or the church of Christ? Is that really the case? See, friends, there's a lot of mis uh, misconception about what the church really looks like. A lot of individuals think that the church is made up of all these different diverse groups, and together, even though they're all different, together they make up the body of Christ. Is that the case? I submit to you that they're not. Because if they are, if they are, they must all be ashamed of Christ. Or they must be ashamed of the bride. Consider this. If they are all part of the bride, which is the church, if they're all part of the church, if they're all part of the body of Christ, the bride of Christ, then why will they not defend her? Why do they not defend the church? Are they ashamed of the bride? You know, it might be the case that if you uh, had an arranged marriage, and let's say you married someone you'd never seen before, and that was all part of the plan, and in some parts of the world they do have arranged marriages, uh, I don't think that I'd particularly care for that. But let's say that it was an arranged marriage and you went to, to marry someone and you realized that, you know, out of all the pretty women in the world, she was the ugliest. You know, or of all the ugly women in the world, she was the ugliest. You know, she was, you know she's, the, she, she's so ugly that, you know, it would make a glass of water, let's say. And you, and you, were, and you, were, you were married to her. And you didn't realize that's, that's who she was. Now, you might, you might then turn around and say, well, you know what, I, I've never seen that woman before in my life. I don't know who she is. She's not married to me. Or if she's mean and hateful, whatever, you might say, you know what, I, I don't want anything to do with her. I don't want anybody to know that I'm married to her. Well, if that's the case, it would be because you were embarrassed. Maybe you were embarrassed because of her looks. Maybe you are embarrassed because of her, her uh, uh, personality or whatever. But if you said... I'm not kin to, I'm not married to her. I've never seen her before. I'm not going to defend her. It must be because there's something that's keeping you from showing your love for her. Maybe that's your, your shame is that she is actually your wife. Well, I believe that's how the denominations really view Christ. Because they say they're married to her. They're so, uh, married to him. They say they're part of the bride of Christ. And they say, oh, yeah, I'm married. I'm married. But when it comes down to talking about the bride, then they want to put her over in the corner and say, no, I've never seen her before in my life. Now you think about that. When's the last time you talked to someone and they told you, yes, they are a Christian? Or when's the last time you talked to someone and they said, yes, I belong to Christ? Well, they're saying, they're saying that they're married to Christ. 
But then when they talk about the church, you bring up the church. Oh, no, no, no. I'm not, I'm not part of that. I'm not part of that. I believe it's because they are, are, are afraid or ashamed to admit that they are part of the body of Christ, that they're part of the bride of Christ, that they, that they are uh, members, uh, make up the bride of Christ. Because when we talk to people and we bring up the church, oftentimes they have a hard time admitting it. They have a hard time admitting that, you know what? Yes, I'm in the church of Christ. Now, if you are ashamed of the church you're in, then I wouldn't say anything about it either. As a matter of fact, we get some of those on, on TV sometimes. They'll call in, and there may be one call in tonight. I don't know. But they may call in, and they're going to say, well, you know, such and such about the church. And you'll say, well, what, what church are you a member of? I'm not going to say. Are you ashamed of it? I thought all these churches were part of the bride of Christ. I thought all these churches made up the, the body of Christ. I thought they all made up the, the bride of Christ. And yet you won't say what church you're a member of? Why is it that people have a hard time admitting this? Listen to, listen to some of these calls that uh, we've gotten from over the past and just listen to what, what uh, some of them say just to show you how uh, ashamed they must really be of the church they're in. Turn to John 14, 21 through 23 and read that. Al, Al. I already know what it says. You're talking about the fact that if you love me, you'll keep my commandments? Mm -hmm. Alright, what do you want to make from that? I don't know. I'm asking you, what, what does that mean? It means that you're going to have to keep the commandments of Jesus Christ. And Paul said in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 37, that the words he spoke were the commandments of Jesus Christ. Now, what does that mean? Are you keeping the commandments of Jesus Christ? I know your voice, sir. You're in a Baptist church. I know where did Jesus command for you to be in a Baptist church. How do you know I'm in a Baptist church? I know your voice. You don't know my voice. Are you in a Baptist church? How do you know I'm I'm asking you, are you in a Baptist church? How do you know? I'm asking you. All I you thought, got to do is tell him, no, you're not. That's right. Not. You'll, you'll finish this. I think I recognize your voice from a call Wait a before. Let me ask you something. I no, sir, if you're not going to answer any of our questions, then we're I'm not going to have a conversation. I'm going to ask you a question just when I get through with this. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll answer your question. All right. Have okay. somebody okay. telling you it's a tent? No, nobody don't tell. I give more than a tent. Okay, well, fine. Now it's your turn to answer our question. Are you in a Baptist church? I'm in a Baptist church, That's and what you I and your fat boy are both on your way to hell. That's where y'all live. Oh, more. This man is a member of the Baptist church up at um, Tim Whitehart's church. What do you call Freedom that? Baptist. Freedom Baptist. And uh, he, he, we caught him in a live you in, Why are you in the Baptist church, Bob? I'm not in the Baptist church. I'm yes, in you're in the church. Baptist church. You're in the Baptist church. No. Why are, you in, why are you in the Baptist church, Bob? I'm not in the Baptist church. 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 Now, the last caller there... The last call there was actually a preacher in the Baptist church. Now, why are they having a hard time admitting they're in the Baptist church? If, in fact, if, if it's true what they say about all these different religions are all part of the body of Christ, oh, we're all part of the body of Christ. Well, if you're all part of the body of Christ, the body is the same as the church, and the church is the same as the bride, why are you ashamed to admit it? See? You see what we're doing here, friends? We're showing that people, when they are ashamed of the church they're in, if it is the case that they're part of the bride of Christ, they must be ashamed of the bride of Christ. Are you ashamed to be married to Christ? Are you ashamed to be part of his bride? Is that really what it is? You know what, friends? I say if you are afraid, if you're ashamed of the church you're in, you need to leave that church. Why would you want to be a part of something that you're ashamed of? Why would you want to be a part of something that you have a hard time admitting that you're in? And not only that, friends, not only that, not only do they have a hard time admitting the body that they're in, but then they won't even defend the body that they're in. They won't even defend the body that they're in, and if the body that they're in is part of the bride of Christ, or if it's part of the body of Christ, or if it's the church that belongs to Christ, why wouldn't you defend that? See, if you really love Christ so much, wouldn't you, wouldn't you defend His bride that you're a part of? Now, I would probably say that most of you out there who are married would defend your wife. I would hope you would. I'd hope you'd defend your wife. But yet, you're married to Christ, you claim. 
but you won't even defend the part of the bride that you profess to be in. Listen to this. Here's, here's Jackie Poe from uh, the Church of God. He's not going to give an answer. But I know that if I will just be obedient to God, that's why, listen to me, that's why I never, 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 never answer my enemy. I'm not going to do it. Y'all can tell me to all day. I won't do it. Because God is my, he'll take care of that. Let's take this yeah. call. Okay, let's take it. Good evening. You don't expect a miracle. Uh, yeah, so, I have a question for Jackie. Okay. Jackie. Do you believe that a Christian can lose his salvation? Well, I tell you what, I'm not really going to even even go to that issue. I just believe that if you want to live for God, you can live for God. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to live for God, you, you know, you can go a different direction. That's, just, that's what the bottom line is. Amen. Thank you for calling. I didn't answer my question, though. Well, that, that's, that's the answer right there. I'm not going to get into any that's contention. Thank you. I'm Thank you for calling. No, we're not going to get in, we're not going to get into that tonight. No. This is three, this is a persecuted but not forsaken. Boy, I'm telling you there are times that persecution's come. I mean, I catch I probably have caught more persecution than anybody in Martinsville. And I haven't done anything to anybody. I mean, I've been on television, I've been on uh, you know, I mean, I'm talked about been in in some kind of paper and all this kind of stuff and and people would and, and I'm, I'm telling you, listen, I felt the pressure. Now, listen to me. You think about this. If you move into a new town, you want people to be friendly to you. But when I moved here, I got put on TV and talked about like a dog. I didn't do anything to anybody. Now, there was pressure put on me to retaliate. This ain't going to be on TV. I can tell you that right now. But, and, and people in the church would want me to retaliate. All right, so there you go. There it is, Jackie Poe. You know, I'm not going to answer. I'm not going to defend uh, the doctrine that we teach, that we believe. Not, no, we're not going to answer questions. Not going to answer questions. We're going to open the phone lines. Not going to answer questions. Well, that's that's not the way we are, friends. We we profess to be members of the body of Christ. We profess to be uh, part of the bride of Christ. We are glad for people to to ask us questions. We're glad to give a defense of the church. Not Jackie Poe. No, no, we're not going to answer that. No, 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 no. We're not going to answer that. You, you can tell me too. You can pressure me. I'm not going to answer that. I'm not going to give a defense. I'm not going to defend the bride of Christ. Lord, we love you, but I'm not going to defend your wife. Oh, no. Well, I thought you were part of the bride of Christ. I thought you were his wife. I thought you were married to Christ. You're not going to give a defense? You're not going to give a defense of the body of Christ? Not even the part of the body you profess to be in? See, friends, it must be because they're really ashamed of it. And again, I would be ashamed too if I couldn't find it in the Bible. Here's another, here's a, another uh, clip or example of a lack of, of, uh, of honor, if you will, among those who profess to be married to Christ. Well, I can show you where you've come down out of when you started. Well, I can show you where you've come down out of when you started. Well, I can show you where you've come down out of when you started. I'm glad he has the title of his show because I really would like to one time tell him what the Bible does say. All right, so now there's um, Bob Ford. He'd like to tell me one time what the Bible does say. Well, here we are. You know, we've been here. We've been on uh, uh, on this station since 2005. How long was that? Eight years? Nine years? Eight years? We were in, in Martinsville. I moved up to Martinsville in 1999. We've been up there 14 years. Why, why don't these people come and tell us what the Bible does say about the bride of Christ? Why don't they come on and tell us what the Bible does say about the body of Christ and the relationship that the body and the bride and the church has to Christ? Is it because you're not confident or is it because you're ashamed of the bride of Christ that you profess to be part of? See, the, the folks that say, well, all these people in the religious world, they're all part of, quote, unquote, Christianity. They come under the big umbrella of Christianity. Oh, really? Well, if that's the case, if that's the case, then why won't you defend your part of the bride of Christ that you profess to be? 
No, you won't do that either. You won't, you won't, you won't defend the bride as a whole. You won't defend the bride in part even. As a matter of fact, you won't defend the other parts of the bride. Listen to this. Here's a, here's a group of people who will say, they come out and say, yeah, we, we, uh, you know, everybody, there's a whole bunch of different people. They're going to be in heaven. They're going to be from, in heaven from all different religions. All different religious groups are going to be in heaven. Listen to this. But they don't defend each other. Here's Randy Linderman, Dr. Randy Linderman, from, uh, uh, at the time, he was at Druid Hills Baptist Church. I think he's still up in Martinsville. Uh, listen to what he says about the Catholics. You know what I believe? In addition to everything else, I believe that when we get to heaven, we're going to find Church of Christ, Moravians, Methodists, Baptists, probably even find a few Catholics there. I don't believe it. You don't believe that? Does the Bible say this? Let me ask you this. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt. Didn't say you might. Thou shalt be saved. Does it say that? Mm -hmm. So if I belong to a Catholic church and I've said that, you're telling me I'm not going to heaven. That's right. Okay. So this is a statement of faith, and I know what the independent fundamental Baptist church believe in, and that's why we have fellowship with them, and that's not why we, uh, that's why we don't go over here and try to pull in the, uh, the Catholics and others because there's, there's not fellowship there. Their statement of faith doesn't match what we believe. I believe that when we get to heaven, we're going to find Church of Christ, Moravians, Methodists, Baptists, probably even find a few Catholics there. So if I belong to a Catholic church and I've said that, you're telling me I'm not going to heaven. That's right. Well, you're wrong. But, uh, that's why we don't go over here and try to pull in the uh, the Catholics and others because there's there's not fellowship there. Their statement of faith doesn't match what we believe. All right. So they're going to find they're going to be Catholics in heaven, but not going to fellowship them down here. Well, why won't you defend them down here if they're all part of the body of Christ? If they're all going to make it to heaven, how are they going to make it to heaven? Are they not part of the body of Christ? Are they not part of the bride of Christ? Why don't you defend the bride? Why don't, you, why don't you stand up and defend all these different parts of the bride? See, friends, they just won't do it. They won't do it. And it's because I believe they're ashamed of even the part that they're in. They're ashamed of their part that they profess to be, uh, that they're in, that they profess as part of the bride of Christ. They won't defend it. As a matter of fact, they disagree with each other, come out and disagree. He just said, we don't have fellowship with them. And here is uh, Miss Elka, and she's going to take issue with, uh, uh, I believe, someone who is believing in once saved, always saved. Let me see if I get this right. Let's see here. Sorry about that. Um, I want to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Did I hear you right? Did you? Uh, okay. Do you believe that once saved, always saved? No, darling. I didn't. Say that. Oh, do you believe that? No, I don't. Oh, you don't. Well, well and I think that if once if we are saved, once we are truly committed and obedient to the law to the Lord, um, and and we continue in that walk with with Him, I think this is where that uh, that cliche comes. That's because it's really not in the Bible. Uh, once saved, always saved. That is not in the Bible. Oh. I think this is where that. Uh, that cliche comes out because it's really not in the Bible. Uh, once saved, always saved. That is not in the Bible. Uh, once saved, always saved. That is not in the Bible. Uh, once saved, always saved. That is not in the Bible. Uh, once saved, always saved. That is not in the Bible. Now, Elka sounds an awful lot like us. That's not in the Bible. Once saved, always saved. Not in the Bible. That's right. But you know what? Neither is the Methodist Church. Neither is the Christian Church. Neither is all the religious groups that she's a part of. You see? So if, if, if we're all part of the bride, all part of the body, all part of the church, collectively, then why wouldn't you defend one another? Why wouldn't you defend each other? See? So what I'm saying is, I believe you're just ashamed of the bride. I believe you're ashamed of the bride you profess to be a part of. Scotty, go ahead and put the phone lines up, if you would, please. All right? So, so why is that? Why is that? Uh... I'm going to take a pause right here and just say I want to welcome everyone who is watching or who is listening on uh, w, uh, 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 KQMK 1680 AM in Hydro, Oklahoma. Uh, we are, my understanding is we're up in uh, 
and running out there on the radio. So we uh, want to give out the numbers. If you would like to call in, uh, let me see if I can, I can read this here, is, uh, is uh, 886-400, I can't read that, Scotty, 3801, uh, or 336-484-8050 uh, is how you can reach us there. That's uh, 886 886- Four zero zero three eight zero one. I believe that's right. And we got the phone lines lit it up, uh, lighted up, lit up. So we're gonna take a call. You're on the word from the Lord. Yes, I want to say I want to start by saying I like and enjoy my Bible lessons that you mailed to me in the mail. Okay. But um, the lesson that I that I'm concerned about is lesson two. Okay. Uh, question question number twenty eight is Matthew chapter nineteen verses three through nine. The question is, is in Jesus' law of marriage, which is for all descendants of Adam and Eve, believers and unbelievers, he only allows divorce because of uh, the answer on the back of the pamphlet. It says fornication, but my understanding is scriptures and vows. And to the question that you had asked earlier about the shame part, I think it's the church and not the couple. Because more than likely when a couple goes before God in church, the whole church knows either the bride or the groom. So when the pastor or the minister okay. or the apocalypse or the deacon marries the two, it's kind of bad. It's kind of shameful for the church to marry them when they know what the with either spouses uh, meaning to do after the sermon. You know what I mean? Okay. Well, let me let me ask you this. Number one, in Matthew nineteen, mm-hmm. Matthew nineteen six through nine, to answer to your first question, Jesus said. The only exception is fornication. So uh, I would say I would I would recommend you go back and read that again to show that Jesus only gave one reason why anyone should put asunder what God joined together. What God joined together, not man put asunder, Matthew nineteen six. And then he said uh, the only exception in Matthew nineteen nine is for fornication. One person could put away the other one if the if the if one party committed fornication, the innocent party could put away that person. And that would dissolve the bond that God put together. Uh, regarding the second okay. question, let me just say this. I did, you know, I did less than five, and I haven't got my answers back yet, but I don't want to run out of your time. Okay. Um, my question was, the one word that came across me that really that pondered my mind was tradition. Like, you know, the tradition, marriage. Um, right. You but I'm saying, I'm, I'm saying, listen, uh, I'm, what I'm saying is Jesus goes all the way back to the beginning and said, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? For this cause, and so he says, for this cause, the fact that God made one man and one woman, that was always God's intent for marriage. And the only thing that's going to separate them or dissolve that marriage bond is death. Death would certainly dissolve it. Or if someone was guilty of fornication, then they could be put away for for that act. And so uh, that's, you know, that's the... Uh, that's kind of the short, quick answer to... Uh, okay, I have one more question. Okay. Okay, do you believe a man can have more than one wife? Not at the same time. Okay, thank you. All right. All right. All right. You on the word from the Lord? Yeah, Brother James, Mike, Mike here. Hey, Brother Mike. You're coming through loud and clear there. All right, great. This is Brother Mike Trusty. If you're out in the uh, Hydro, Oklahoma area... I would say go worship with the the saints over at Hydro and let them know that you you're listening on the radio uh, on the radio to a word from the Lord from Reedsville, North Carolina, and uh, we're hoping to uh, uh, be bigger and be- in a bigger and better way, I guess, as as days go on. Uh, we're trying to work out some plans with um, or some uh, uh, I guess some plans with uh, Mike and the, and the brethren out there to. Uh, getting more broadcasts like this going, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I uh, think you're doing a great job out there. You know, I, I've listened to your program tonight, and, you know, many people, a lot of people, after uh, looking at the conflict, conflicting teaching of what's going on out there today uh, in the context of the church, uh, I believe Brother James, they've erroneously concluded that the church is no longer relevant or actually necessary, uh, and they re- really know little about the, what the Bible says on the subject, so they decide... You know, they really don't need the church. They think the church is just, you know, uh, 
not part of anything. And so they say, you know, I can accept Jesus, but I, I don't want to be a, a church member. So right. it's often a, a repeated statement I hear a lot. So, but, you know, God's Word clears all that up, you know. Exactly right. Well, and two, I mean, why would they need a church when, uh, when you have folks that are, you know, having bar churches and cowboy churches and whatever? I mean, you can do what you're already doing. And, and never change a lick about your lifestyle because man comes along and says, well, we'll just call this a church, and boom, you know, now we're okay. So, uh, you know. Exactly right. That's, uh, uh, you got all that right. Of course, again, the Bible clears all that up. You know, Acts exactly. 8, 1, Acts 9, 31, many places. And uh, it just amazes me how people don't understand the simple truth of the gospel. Well, that's why we're trying to get the simple truth of the gospel out so more and more people can hear it and help hopefully clear out some of that ignorance and false teaching that they've been uh, uh, fed, hook, line, and sinker, and uh, maybe save a few. That's what we're trying to do. Well, amen. Well, listen, we, I appreciate your work out there, and you're coming through loud and clear here in Oklahoma, and maybe we can touch some uh, souls out there, and they will come to that truth, James. Okay. All right. Appreciate you, brother. Thanks for calling in. Okay. Thank All you. Right. Bye. Bye. All right. That's really encouraging. So, um, Oklahoma is, uh, we're broadcasting in Oklahoma. Uh, Word of the Lord is outreaching in Oklahoma, so we are grateful for that. And, uh, and that's really true. You know, what we're talking about is the reason why a lot of people are ashamed about the church or have, really have no regard for the church is because, number one, members of the church, members of the body of Christ are even ashamed. But also those in the denominational world, <clears throat> they think the church is so insignificant that they're not even going to make an issue about it. So, it must be because they're ashamed or they don't understand or maybe both. But you may be ashamed of the bride, but what about ashamed of the groom? I want you to consider this. I want you to consider this, friends. When, when, uh, God, when God made, the, uh, made uh, man and woman, notice this, in Genesis chapter 2, 21 through 25, I didn't quite get there. Genesis 2, 21 through 25, here is what uh, he says about them. 2, Genesis 2, 21. He says, And the Lord, and the Lord uh, caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is not bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of the man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. So, husband and wife, God made, the, made them two, uh, made, uh, made them two, uh, made the two one. All right, now, so, Notice God called them Adam in Genesis 5 and verse 2. Genesis 5 and verse 2, God called uh, them Adam. I'm already having time seeing that over there. Genesis 5 and verse 2. This is the book of the generation of Adam in the day that God created man, and the likeness of God made he him. Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. Now, why do you think God called them Adam? It was because they were one. They were one. Just like the, the lady that called in earlier, and we went to Matthew chapter 19, Jesus said, Have you not read he that made them in the beginning, made them male and female, but he brought them together. They twain shall be one flesh, man and wife. Husband and wife are together. Now, the wife wears the name of the husband. I know that's not, that's not trendy now. You know, it's, you know we, got, we got to be uh, feminist and we have to be uh, highfalutin and it's not, you know, we're trying to break these traditions and, you know, archaic and we don't want to be old school, old fashioned in that, in that way. So, you know, the, the woman keeps her name and she has her professional name and so forth. Well, that's not the way God intended God intended for them to be together and they dwell together, live together as husband and wife and called their name Adam. Now, if the followers of Christ, if the people who claim to follow Christ are truly 
uh, proud of the fact that they're following Christ, why won't they wear his name? Notice this in Acts 11 and verse 26. Acts 11 verse 26. The Bible says, And when he had found when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch, and it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first at Antioch, in Antioch. The disciples were called Christians. They were wearing the name of Christ because they were married to Christ. If you're married to Christ, friends, that means you're wearing his name. You're wearing his name. In Ephesians chapter 3, Ephesians 3, verses 14 and 15. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. They're named after Christ. Now why is it that if someone professes to be a Christian, why would they be ashamed of that name? It is a worthy name. It is a, a name that you should be glad to wear. Uh, Philippians chapter 2 and verse 9 Philippians 2 and verse 9 notice this wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth God has given him a highly exalted name James calls it in James 2 and verse 7 he says it is a worthy name by which you are called. Yet people blaspheme that worthy name by which you are called, and there are some people who claim to be Christians, yet they won't know wear the name of Christ. What are you ashamed of, friends? Are you embarrassed to be married to Christ? You say you're married to Christ. But then when you turn around and someone says, well, what, what name? You know, what, what church are you a member of? What bride are you? You know, whose bride are you? Who are you married to? Well, I'm not going to tell you that. I'm not going to tell you who I'm married to. Are you ashamed? You've got to be ashamed. If you're not going to say who you're married to, listen, but we get it all the time. Denominations, they don't want to wear his name. People in the denomination world do not want to wear the name of Christ. So why is it then they claim to be married to Christ if they won't even wear his name? Look at this. Listen to, listen to uh, uh, this, this man. Uh, my, my, my church is in the Bible. Would you provide that scripture for us so we can read it to the television audience? Yeah, chapter 20. And verse 28, you read that. What, what chapter that is? Chapter 20. What book, what book is it? Acts, Acts chapter 20. Uh-huh. And verse 28. Okay. Your church is in the Bible? Yeah. All right. Could I read that for you? Yeah. All right. In Acts 20 and verse 28, that passage says, Take heed unto yourselves and to all of the flock over which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to Feed the church of God. Now, are you listening, television audience? Listening carefully. To feed the church of God. Church of God. The church of God and the church of Christ are one and the same thing. That's but, right. That's right. That's right. Church of God. The church of God is the church of Christ. That's uh, right. This is Noah Vi from Stanley Town uh, Church of God. Isn't that right? No, I'm I'm a Baptist. Now you I'm called on the you called on the other day and you said it was the Church of God. So I'm gonna start. Well, I talking. am in the Church of then God. Why don't, the church then why don't you call the Church of God? Why don't you call the Church of God? I am. Why don't in you the Why don't you tell everybody saved on the Lord Jesus Christ is in the Church of God? Now why don't, Now why don't you tell your pastor? What's his name? Edwin Moore. Is your pastor named Edwin? No. What's your pastor's name? That's not your business. Well, I'm. I, I'm What's the Bible say? Got it. Yes, sir. Uh, we met once uh, at your church. I'm Jimmy Whitlow. Yes, sir. And uh, I came to your church for a friend of mine's funeral once. I remember that. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> I thought a lot about what you've been explaining.
complaining about denominational denominations, and I'm a member of a Southern Baptist church. Yes, sir. And I've decided to answer your question about why I'm in a Baptist church as this. Okay. I go to the Church of Christ over at Fontaine Baptist. That's all I want to say. Thank okay. you. All right. Well, <clears throat> but if I see a group of people who say, well, we're, we're Baptist. Well, who do you belong to? You know, you're not telling anybody who you belong to. Now, you, I know you would say, well, I belong to Christ, but right. your name doesn't indicate that. I guess I'd be more of an advocate of saying I am a Christian, and I gather at Druid Hills Baptist Church. Why, why, why be a member of the Baptist Church? Baptist Bride is really what we're talking about, right? Because church, the church is the bride. Right? The church is the body. Church is body, bride of Christ. But yet he says, I'm a Christian, but I assemble with the Baptist bride. Well, whoa, wait a minute. If you are married to Christ, what are you doing over here shacking up with the Baptist? If you're a Christian, why are you shacking up with the Methodist? If you're a Christian, why are you shacking up with the Pentecostal? See that? Well, why is it that you won't even wear the name of Christ? Well, I want, I want to wear the name of Christ, but I don't want to admit that I'm part of the bride of Christ. See, something's wrong with this, friends. It's because we don't understand the nature of the church, or it's because people have been convinced that, that you don't have to be married to Christ. Well, you know, socially speaking, we have a problem with that too. People are told they don't have to be married. That's why, do you realize, kind of getting off on a tangent here, but do you realize that... Uh, uh, I believe it's, uh, I think I heard on the, on the radio the other day, it was something like 60 or maybe 70% of uh, children are born out of wedlock. Now, now, what's wrong with this, friends? What's wrong with this? People are saying, well, marriage is not important. And then when it gets over to the spiritual realm, they think the same thing. They are ashamed to be married to Christ. They won't wear his name. They won't defend those other people who claim to be married to Christ. So if they're all part of the bride of Christ, if they're all part of the, uh, the body of Christ, or if they're all part of the church of Christ, then why are they all wearing these different names? See, what we've been trying to get people to do is just say, look, why don't you just call yourself Christians? In the first century, after the first gospel sermon was preached in Acts chapter 2, what church was it? that all those people were added to. What church was it? It wasn't the Baptist church. It wasn't the Methodist church. It wasn't the Lutheran church. It wasn't the Episcopalian church. It wasn't even the Roman Catholic church. It was simply the church that belonged to Christ. Christ bought it. It belongs to him. It should wear his name. It's the church of Christ. You people, well, you know, I'm part of the bride of Christ. I'm part of the church of Christ. I'm part of that church, but I'm not going to wear his name. Instead, they use that slate, well, a church of Christ. All that means, friends, when you hear someone say, well, I'm a member of a church of Christ, that means they're one amongst all these other little denominations. That's the denominational phrase. I'm a member of so-and-so church, which is a church of Christ. That's what the Methodists have in the front of their uh, discipline. The Methodist church is a church of Christ. Well, why don't you just wear his name then? If you're married to Christ, if you're part of the bride of Christ, the body of Christ, why don't you wear his name? Why, why do you insist on wearing someone else's name? Here's a lady that says, well, you know what, I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna be after Paul. I'm going to be after Paul. To Paul. Paul said the mystery was revealed to him for the Gentiles, ma'am. Peter preached That's to the right. Jews. That's right. We're, we're, we're Gentiles. Well, you know, he preached to the Jews. I tell you, so do you, do you only follow Paul's doctrine? What, I'm Paul? A Paul? Yes, I'm a Pauline uh, believer. Oh, okay. All right, All right. We got you so, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. That's right. I'm Pauline. I'm a Pauline. Well, if your first name is Pauline, that's fine. But if you are saying religiously, you follow Paul, therefore you are a Pauline disciple, a Pauline Christian, whatever. Paul says, I don't want anybody 
following after me. I want you to follow Christ. He didn't want to baptize anybody if they were going to come out and say, well, I'm, I'm following Paul. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Yet people today, they won't wear the Christ's name. They want to wear someone else's name. That's what Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 12 and 13. He says, now this I say that every one of you that saith, I am of Paul, I am of Apollos, I am of Cephas, and I of Christ. He said, is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you, or were you baptized in the name of Paul? Is Christ divided? Well, apparently in the denominational world, the answer would be yes, because you all claim to be part of the body of Christ, the bride of Christ, the church of Christ, and you're all wearing different names. And you're saying, well, we're still all of Christ. That's what Paul was dealing with. He said, look, you can't say I'm a Paul, I'm a Cephas, and I'm a Paulus, and then turn around and say I'm of Christ too. No, you should just all be of Christ. And friends, that's exactly what we've been saying all this time. You've got to be a member of the church of Christ. And you should wear his name. Why is it that people are so ashamed to wear the name of Christ? Look at this. Look at this. They, say, they want to say we're members of the body of Christ. This is just right from the yellow pages. You've got St. Paul's Episcopal Church, St. John's Baptist Church, St. Paul High Street Baptist, St. Paul Holiness Church, St. James Pentecostal Holiness Church, St. Paul Pentecostal Holiness Church. Now think about this. They're saying Paul has an Episcopal Church, Paul has a Baptist Church, Paul has a Holiness Church, and Paul has a Pentecostal Holiness Church. <coughs> but not, it's bad enough that they divide up Christ, then they're going to divide up the person that they're following instead of Christ. Now Paul's got four different kinds of churches. Christ has got I don't know how many. Paul's got I don't know how many. Here James has two up. John has one and James has one. I wonder if James Pentecostal Church is different from Paul's Pentecostal Church. But if they were all part of Christ's church, they'd all be the same. They'd all be speaking the same things. They'd be teaching the same things. They'd be part of the same body. They'd be part of the same bride. They'd be part of the same church that Christ died for. See, friends, it's so easy. Why is it that you're ashamed to wear these names? They're not in the Bible. Peter said in 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 14, he said, It was good if you were reproached for the name of what? Christ. He didn't say it's good if you were reproached for the name of Baptist. He didn't say it's good if you were approached for the name of Luther or the Catholic or the Pentecostal or the Wesleyan. He didn't say any of those. Why? Because they didn't even know about those. God hadn't even thought about those churches. Peter said again in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 16, he said you should suffer as a Christian. How can you say that I'm a Christian and then turn around and wear someone else's name that you didn't even get out of the Bible, that you got out of the yellow pages, made up? after some form or some something that you do. Friends, we're trying to get you back to the New Testament. I'm not ashamed to wear the name of Christ. I'm not ashamed to talk about the truth of the church of Christ. And I'm not ashamed of the consequences, nor am I afraid of the consequences that come from being in the church of Christ. That's why I want to tell you clearly. There's only one church in the Bible. One kind of church in the Bible is the church of Christ. And you have to be a member of that church in order to be saved. How do you do that? You must believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. John 8, 24. You must repent of your sins. Acts 17, verse 30. Paul commanded all men everywhere. God said God, Paul said God commanded all men everywhere to repent. You have to confess that you believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Acts chapter 8, verse 36 and 37. And then be baptized. For the remission of sins, Acts 2.38, your sins will be washed away when you're baptized, Acts 22, verse 16. And God will add you to the church, the body of Christ, that Christ one day will save, Ephesians 5 and verse 23. Friends, we hope this has helped. We hope that you are, are thinking more about the, uh, what it means to be a member of the body of Christ and what it means to uh, uh, serve Him. If we can help you in any way, we want to do that. Wherever you're watching, wherever you're listening, if you're outside of this area, find a, the Church of Christ in your area and ask them to give you what the Bible says and you should always get a word from the Lord. Have a good night. Three motor vehicle accidents, the first around 7.30 this morning, the third one 
ended up at around noon today. We don't have official reports on any of the three as of right now because police officers are busy trying to piece together what happened in all three of those accidents. But we do have reports from Star News' own Charles Wells who responded to all three of the